Good morning, my beautiful people out there. Welcome back to Sun Up on 7. You just saw a little tribute that was for Kasman Gill. So, in our first conversation this morning, we are here joined with Kasman's dad, Mr. Cecil Gill, who will be talking about what life has been like one year later, those tragic events, as well as a reward for any tips that, that comes in leading to the arrest and finding of Kasman's murder. So, good morning, Mr. Gill. Welcome to our couch this morning. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Um, that's the lead clip right there. Send me now the emotional uh, thing, right? Right. Um, you can one, take a minute. Take a minute yeah. if you need. Yeah. Um, that's one year later, right? Um, life, you know, Grieving is not a one year thing. Yeah. Um, it is. It is for as long as you live. You want to talk about some of the good times, mm -hmm. Kasman yeah. and things like that? Uh, As I say, dress up in a wali liar robe. They saw what, what was happening there. <laughs> well, he wanted to be a liar. Okay. Yeah. That, was his, uh, that was his dream. Ever since he was uh, about 10 years old. Great. Yeah. Uh, he wrote it in his autobiography. So, uh, I'll show you that. that yeah. I think I have that here. Yeah. Uh, Aww. Yeah, see? That's his dream, that's what he wanted to do, right? He wanted to help the needy. I want to be a lawyer to defend the innocent. My oh motto my is the sky is the limit. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That is beautiful. Yeah. People, his, bi his autobiography here. This is touching. Yeah. That is. So, you know. There you go. So we, we as a family, you know, life has changed. The day he got shot. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. You see? And uh, looking at him for 52 days, you know, trying to survive, and eventually he passed on this day. I sympathize with Miss Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, because I know what they are going through. Definitely. Right. You know, trying to deal with the loss of their little boy. And he was also an SJC student, right? young, young Mr. Gabriel. Um, what I want to say is so beautiful, because we've had to touch base on it a couple of times. Um, the class of SJC 2023, they have really been pushing in the sense of just trying to make sure they remember Duane and Kasman. They mm -hmm. are actually planning something to do yeah. for them and they made us know and announced it to us all on the right, show that right. they're saving two I, seats I, I for graduation. I sit down and I watch yes. that, you know, yeah, that was nice. That, that was, was so very beautiful. good. I went to the school to thank them. Yes. You know, and uh, yeah, so that, that was beautiful. But you know, Kasman was such a good kid, you know. Yes. He was such a jovial, you know, Young fellow, and you know, so 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 promising, you know, very respectable. Um, he have two other sisters, and you know, he he, he was the he, you know their guy, you know. Right. They go to we, we anything we want, we want, we need something with the phone, with the computer, with him. He was the man, you know. He was the tech guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, you know, they have problem with their match season one, you know, because he was not very right. sharp with match, right? Right. So, yeah. Um, but, you know. Mr. Gill, I'd like to take you back to that day in question. Uh, I know that you feel like there's a lot of things that could have been better. And I know that we have the clip, um, you requested the clip of, of the actual uh, police vehicle being there, that whole scene. Uh, could you tell us about what, occurred, what could have been different, you believe? 
Um, on that day right there, as you see, according to, uh, to the people on the scene, the police refused to move him because they said they didn't have a glove. They didn't have gloves. And that was their reason for not moving that, my, my son. Yeah. So they would have left him there to die right there on that pavement. Now, the clip shows the, the bystanders who are trying to help. The way you right. see the way they have him and then the guy over him. Yeah. Which his back caved in. Right. You see, that was not the proper way to move him. No. Definitely. He should have been turned over on his back. So and if, the, and if the, the professional, would, that would have helped. But right. with that cave, and then he is over him, right there, see? See, yeah. he's right there on the back. And, and that, I think, caused the, the, a spinal injury. Because they, uh, according to the autopsy, there was no projectile that did that. The projectile hit upper, the upper spine. Okay. Oh, okay. Right, which caused the, 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 the total paralysis. See? So they, 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 the doctor that did the autopsy told me that he don't know how that injury came about because, you know, you know that's all the way in the Once center. The back, you see, right. That's what, where the curve is. Where uh -huh. the, yeah. So they... In that instance, I, you know, the, 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 the police department, you know, really lock up on that. Right. To, to refuse to move someone because you don't have a gloves, you know, then you are not saving lives. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. You know, because then you're supposed to be thinking sharp. You're a trained person. Yeah. I feel like gloves you are also you're supposed, supposed to be, to be yeah, right. Like you're supposed people. to have all of these other things needed. Yeah. It was in the time of what COVID was coming down. Exactly. So you were not equipped for anything. Yeah. You see? So that is one of, and then besides that with the police, the investigation itself, you know, the incompetence of the police department in doing their investigation, you know, they, 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 I don't know if the if the the, the bank where the, the the camera the video footage is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they cut it off and don't want to show it. Because I did a survey of the area, and I did it this morning before I came here, and the cameras were right there where the my son got there. shot. Mm. So how come you only see up to the point where the young man is pulling the gun out, but you didn't see exactly when he fired the shot? Because the, the, the footage is stopped right there. The, the footage fo itself or the angle is stopped right there? Well, the, the, I, I don't know if it's the it, angle because the, the camera... The footage the, the, it's, it's one of those 350 camera. Okay. So you could see the, that should have had that entire ah, area okay. there. So the footage seems to have stopped. Stopped right where? There, right? Okay. Now, the police department told me that they sent the footage to the FBI. Whether they did or not, I don't know. But when I questioned it, they, they, they told me that the FBI could not have enhanced it because of the poor quality. And, you know, I find it hard to believe, right? The FBI, no, I, they have technology and they are... I know his mom is in the chat saying right now it's, it's very hard as well that that was the her ma, son, Well, she has, it, it has been devastated on her. Devastating on my two daughters. The family life has changed significantly. I myself has changed. I withdraw when I'm at home because I got to pass his room. His room is empty. Yeah. Right. You know. You know. Mr. Gill, apart from the investigation and the police, I understand that there's something about the, the hospital as well. Um, I, when, I, when I speak of these things here, I am speaking in general terms that maybe the police department can improve themselves. Maybe the Carl Husner can improve. The health, the health sector can improve. You know, government need to put the re necessary resource. Now, Carl Husner Memorial Hospital, the day my son got shot and we went there, they did not have a, 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 a scan, a CT scan machine. They did not have an MRI machine. We had to rush him from Carl Hushner to Medical Associates to do the CAT scan. 
Uh, the MRI was a bit different because of the metal that was still in him. Yeah. Right? The bullet slug. And I would hope that up until this, it's been one year, while we were there, they told me, oh, the technician is coming in to repair the CAT scan machine. Up until he died, that machine was not repaired. I don't know how it is now, if they have one, but I know my aunt who, is, uh, who has a, a fun, a charitable thing that she, she's a nurse in the U.S. And she had spoken to Mr. Bernard Wagner while he was on a visit to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and mentioned about the cat scan and he said that they were going to get one. It's a year later, my son has died. Um, and I, I, I really don't know if there's a CAT scan machine at the Carl Houston Memorial Hospital. I would hope that there is so that, you know, other, other people wouldn't have to go through that what I've been right. through. Here and there and everything. Yeah. Because it, it's you been see? a lot of rush from the, the vehicle to trying to go to yeah. the hospital, then have to go to our next Another hospital. One, yeah. And you like, see, oh, that, that's a strain that on What that body. does is we try to give, take him to Medical Associates for a second CAT scan. And before we got out the ICU, we had to push him back in and hook him back up on the ventilator because his, the oxygen level was falling rapidly oh. and his blood pressure was falling. Right? Carl Hushner, um, the other thing in, with Carl Hushner is that I partly blame Carl Hushner for my son's demise simply because on the night of the 18th of September, the ventilator malfunctioned. And that was not the only malfunction. It had malfunctioned three times prior. And they put him back on that same machine. Wow. Now, I am asking the people at Carl Wishner mm -hmm. for a thorough investigation into what happened that night. I am doing this public right now. We had a meeting with the Quality Control Board and in that meeting, they told us that, and I have it recorded, they told us that the ventilator alarm went off, went off, you know, mm -hmm. and there was immediate intervention. Prior to the, the other occasions when, my, when the machine malfunctioned, they were able to get to him or were able to intervene to save his life. On this occasion, they, didn't, they were not. How long did it take? I asked the doctor the morning when they informed me of the malfunction, and he said about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You only need five minutes for you to go to brain dead. When I saw my boy that morning, he was stiff, stiff, stiff. His eyes were protruding, and they were blinking involuntarily staring to the, in the ceiling and his complexion changed he got dark tried to move him nothing he was stiff like That's rock close. i told him immediately he's dead they said no he's not he, he, we, we have him sedated i am i'm so stupid you're playing with my intelligence mm -hmm. right? he was like that for about four days or five days in that same state and I knew that he was brain dead. I asked them to, to please tell me the condition of his brain. Yeah. Then, and they said they had to get a neurologist. I haven't heard from a neurologist up until this moment. Wow. Eh? And prior to that malfunction, we were video chatting with my son. For, 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 for four days, every evening, because they had stopped my visit because of the COVID situation. I couldn't go in to see him. Okay. And we video chat with him in the evening time. But then on that Thursday, they refused to video chat. And the Thursday night at 12 o'clock, when I jump out of my bed, my, 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 the mother asked me, um, what's your problem? I said, he needs me. Something is wrong. 
And then it was the morning when I went there. That's when you saw we him found in that out what, was, what, what went wrong. They did not inform me. They should have informed me at that moment when something went wrong. Yeah. Right. right? And during the day before that, he asked for me. He, want, he asked to speak to me. They did not contact me. And to, I mean, my, my boy is dying. Maybe who, that was his last word or his last wish that he wanted to say something to me. And they did not inform me, which hurts me because I, I keep asking, what did you want to say to me? You know? Mr. Gill, it is a very heart-wrenching story there. And I, I just like want to take it back to the actual incident itself. Um, you say you saw the cameras with the, the perpetrator pulling out the gun and inflicting the fatal shot or the, the, the shot that caused all of this to happen. Um, I understand as well that there's a reward that you have that you want to give to anybody out there. Could you tell us more about that? Yes. Um, friends and family members and friends have given us some contribution. I wish it could have been more, you know. And we managed to come up with a thousand dollars so far. So we are offering the reward to anyone, any brave person, you know, any concerned citizen who 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 probably have information that could lead to the arrest of the perpetrators of this 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 this, this you know tragedy here, you know. Um, business people, you know, crime affects businesses, so we, 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 you know, we, we want justice because part of the healing process is to see justice done, yeah. right? We don't know why they shot the kid because he has hurt and done nothing to no one. He, he, he just went out on an occasion that day after being locked down for COVID for so long. Right. You think that you are protecting your children and you have them locked in. And, you know, you keep them away from certain elements, right? But, and you give them that break. You never know when tragedy is going to hit. Mr. Gill, you know, could you provide a number for people to get in contact with you to as well um, in regards to giving the information? Yes, my, my number is 605-3186, or they can take it directly to the police department. All right, and this is a thousand dollar reward for information leading to the arrest, arrest. person or persons uh, responsible right. for the, the right. unfortunate the shooting of, of, of Gasman. You know, and um, you know, like I say, you know, the, the grieving never stops. You know, we cry every day. There are moments when I'm driving and um, I see the SJC students, and I would just pull over and I cry because you know I'm used to seeing him. Yeah. From whom? And in the comments, so much people are sending their prayers and condolences and understanding it's, it's a hard time. They can't even imagine. Some people actually share the same sentiment, losing a loved one. And grief is something that comes in so much different forms. And for you to lose a son, it's even harder to as well because, you know, at a young age. Okay, so you know, we, 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 we visit every Sunday, you know. We understand that, yeah. and we know we must die. But when it hits you like that, yeah. you know, unexpected. It's and a whole other. Well. You know, young fifteen-year-old haven't even had a chance to enjoy, you know, the bitter and the sweet. Like, you know, and when when I see the other young men. I am, um, you know, I'm devastated by, yeah. The nation is devastated to hear all of this and to, to see all these young men as well um, losing their lives to, yeah. to, oh, the, so. the, to the lives of, from another person. Yeah, yeah in a, such an unfortunate <clears throat> way. We yeah. just, again, heartfelt prayers and condolences. And for those out there, Mr. Gill has made it very clear there is a $1,000 reward for anybody that can be able to bring solid, concrete information that can help and convict the person or persons that are responsible for Hasman's death. So please, if you know something, anything at all, bring forth that information 
and help a family just get a glimpse of justice because honestly, you know, they totally deserve it. And remember, if it was in your place, you would totally want someone to be able to help. And so, Mr. Gill, we thank you so much for yes, having the brave and courage to come up here, share your story for your family, everyone, the friends that have been touched by Castman's life. We just continue to ask you to continue to, you know, stay strong, speak his name, speak the memories, because yeah. it's when we stop talking is that's when he dies a second day. Yes. And so we're thankful for you coming over here, and we're hoping that the community hears this and can be able to reach out and help because that's what we're supposed to do as a community. So please do our part, and let's see justice come for Kasman's family. Thank you yes. very much for having me. No problem at all. And with that, we go to our next commercial break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned.